shortly after acquiring that full stake, AT&T saw a short decrease followed by a spike up, the low being about $31.50. Effective immediately, Gray Haddock, the X head of the Rooster Teeth Animation Department is stepping down. This breaking news comes in the wake of allegations from employees talking about Rooster Teeth's lack of conduct surrounding payments for overtime work, especially in said animation department. I want to give a massive thanks to everybody who's been sending me information about all this breaking news throughout the weekend. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to cover it since I've been out of town, and I was also delayed in Houston for an extra day due to terrible weather and, well, an opinion of certain mismanagement with a certain airline, but that's a whole other topic. Anyways, I'll be holding a live stream talking about Anime Matsuri after this video, so be sure you are subscribed and have notifications on for that, as well as other awesome news updates. That's the plan for this video, though. We're going to take a look at Rooster Teeth's response to these allegations, their post about Gray stepping down, and I'll do a follow-up video tomorrow looking at the allegations, and that's a little historical event in Rooster Teeth's history known as Lettergate. So it'll be a very interesting discussion, very interesting video tomorrow. I hope you stay tuned for that. And of course, a lot of people have been covering the story, and I do think that they've done a pretty good job of it. I'm a bit late to it, as I said, since I was out of town. However, I still want to talk about this to share the news if you haven't heard about it, and also because I think I offer an interesting perspective, being that I've followed Rooster Teeth and Ruby quite closely for a number of years now. With all that said, that's the plan for this video, and for tomorrow, let's get into it. Welcome back. Here is Rooster Teeth's official response to the allegations, specifically a recent Reddit thread that compiled said allegations from the Glassdoor reviews. Again, we'll take a more thorough look at those allegations and compare them to Lettergate tomorrow. So again, stay tuned for that. But let's talk about this. Starting from the top, it reads, We have seen the recent messages about Rooster Teeth's animation studio related to Crunch. Crunch, of course, being the workload burden forced onto employees to get work done in a very short amount of time. And want to and want everyone to know we take these concerns seriously. We acknowledge that we could have better managed our animation pipeline, and we apologize to all who have been affected. Now, I, of course, just have an opinion here, and you're welcome to your own opinion, but it concerns me that Rooster Teeth is only talking about being concerned about these issues. Now that they've come to light, if they knew this was going on for a while and they were concerned for a while... Why did they wait to take action until this all surfaced? That's just an opinion. Let's keep on reading. Maybe that opinion will change as we further down the line of this post. It continues on. Over the last several months, we conducted a review and have taken several steps to improve communication and workflow to ensure we have a studio where people are happy to come to work every day. We are announcing today new measures on the road to improvement. So again, they talk about this issue going on for the last several months conducting a review at some point, I assume, during that time period, and taking several steps to improve communication and workflow, which I assume is a more recent thing as of these allegations surfacing. But the point still stands, in my opinion. I don't know why they waited to take action until these allegations came to the surface. In, in, in that respect, it makes me feel like this is a rather hollow apology. But let's continue on. Effective today, we are moving forward with a previously planned change, again, with the previously planned stuff. So this is like the third, um, this is the third uh, paragraph in a row. They've kind of, you know, brought this up, right? So they said that they take the concerns seriously uh, regarding the allegations that have been going on. And again, they've been going on for a little while. The last several months, they conducted a review. So if they've had this going on for so long, why did they wait so long? If they had a previously planned change in the producing and creative structure, which they go on the right right here, plan change in our produ pr producing and creative structure, why did they only now take action? Guys, in the comments, let me know. Am I being a bit too hard on Rooster Teeth? Or do you have that same kind of vibe? Does this feel like a rather hollow apology? Or do you think it's sincere? Continuing on, though, here's where Gray steps down. Reads, Gray G. Haddock is stepping down as head of studio for animation to dedicate himself to a strictly creative role. With Gray's help, we have been in the process of hiring a new production head of the department who will be responsible for the overall producer hierarchy and staff management. We want to thank Gray for... Let me move myself out of the way here. Give me one moment. Uh, we want to 
Where do we leave off? Ah, oh, yes. We want to thank Gray for his hard work and dedication to growing the animation studio over these years and are excited to continue working with him in this new capacity. Further, we are consulting with experienced leaders in the animation industry on our workflow, pipeline, production structure, and other areas to enhance the workplace experience for our staff. Margaret M. Dean, the head of Elation Animation Studios and president of Women in Animation, will consult with us and aid the search for a new studio lead. Let's take a brief look at Margaret M. Dean's uh, catalog here, her resume, so to speak. Some of the stuff she's worked on, Robot Chicken, Super Mansion, Hot Streets, Buddy Thunderstruck. I don't really know what these are. I know what Simpsons is, obviously, and Robot Chicken. Not too familiar with the other ones. But it does look like she's worked on a fair amount of production. So maybe this is a positive change for Rooster Teeth. I know I've given them a hard time in this video so far. So I'll give them a little leeway here. Maybe this is a good change. I don't know anything about her, though, besides what we're reading right here. I don't know about her track record, her history. But at least she's worked on a fair number of productions. 54 credits to be specific. So maybe it's a positive change. I don't know, but more on that at the end of the video. Specifically, Rooster Teeth and, well, their recent struggles. I mean, take a look here, for example. On January 31st, 2019, only a few months ago, Yvonne Secretan, the CEO, Chief Operating Officer of Rooster Teeth, announced her retirement. Goes on to say she would go on to become the first person to retire from the company. And then shortly after, on April 12th, 2019, Ezra Cooperstein announced that he would be stepping down as president of Rooster Teeth effective April 26th. So that is now since past. He is also gone. Now you have Gray stepping down. Now what's interesting is back in 2018, AT&T became a majority owner of Otter Media, which therefore also causes them to be a majority owner of Full Screen and therefore also Rooster Teeth. Now we can't really know for sure how profitable Rooster Teeth is as they are not a public company. So we have to take a look at AT&T. But with AT&T's financial statements, we can get somewhat of an idea of how that business decision might be going for them. Let's also not forget that Mishimina themselves has also shut down. So it's not impossible for AT&T to cut loose what they feel may be a potential financial burden. Now, what you're looking at here is a candlestick chart of AT&T. Each one of these lines, these candlesticks, represents one day of trading. Now, it's going to take a lot for me to explain how this all works for you, but just keep that in mind. Let's uh, let's not go through everything and make this really confusing. The point is, uh, let, me, let me raise the graph a little bit too so you can see the dates on the bottom better. AT&T got that majority acquisition back in August of 2018, which would be right about, right about here. Right about here. So you can see this was close to the high point in this time period where we have all the data leading up until the current time period, which is slightly off screen. Let me adjust that for you here. There you go. So as you can see, shortly after acquiring that full stake, AT&T saw a short decrease followed by a spike up, the low being about $31.50 and the high of that period being right about $34.25. However, Shortly after September, it began tanking. The stock for AT&T dropping all the way down to $31, then eventually $28, where it bounced up and had a recovery about a month later to $32, and then massive falling off all the way to $27. And it's since made a minor recovery to $29, still quite far away from that original high of around 30, uh, 30, excuse me. Let, me, let me just get that line there. Okay around $34.20, as we said. So this is still a very negative downtrend. And again, I'm not saying this is responsible for Rooster Teeth, for them acquiring Rooster Teeth. We don't know. We can only make assumptions based off the data that we do have since Rooster Teeth is not a public company. But this all adds to the speculation in a rather interesting manner, at least in my opinion. Okay, back to Rooster Teeth's post here. So it continues on to finish saying, we'll always continue to work on improvements to our workplace. I don't doubt that. I mean, I'm sure they want to improve their workplace and their bottom line. And we appreciate everyone's support and feedback on this ongoing mission. Still, I feel like this apology is rather hollow, even reading the full thing. That's just my opinion. And, well, it's unfortunate that Rooster Teeth is going down this road. I mean, they're a company that had a lot of potential and could have continued doing great things. Maybe they still will, but I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this news. And to reiterate... I will be doing a follow-up video, more in-depth video, 
tomorrow. All right, my friends, that's about it for this video. I got to wrap it up. I have to be live in about 30 minutes. So hopefully while this processes, it won't slow my stream down uh, in quality since the computer will be processing that and streaming at the same time. Fingers crossed that will work out. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you live tonight. And I hope to see you in tomorrow's follow-up video of this one. Have a good one, and I'll see you then. Right